And now for something completely different. Yes, I decided it's all very well messing around with old motorbikes and bumper cars and race cars and other exotica. And it's time I took care of my daily driver. point in worrying about the inside at the moment because that's been trashed by the boys mm, no doubt continue to be so so job number one sort out the paintwork it's been trashed um, these stickers as you can see have been removed but the glue remains kind of embedded in the paint uh, really shocking honestly so um, these stickers are coming off as well and uh, the roof I painted with that plasti dip stuff that I've mentioned before. It's not really good for large areas um, and fades very badly, gets burnt by the sun, as you can see on the bumpers as well. So all that will be covered up and we're using rhino paint, yeah, uh, for flatbeds of uh, pickup trucks, yeah. Uh, so I've started on the front because the the bonnet, the hood, was uh, more shocking than anything else. And as you can see, it's come out quite nicely. And of course, it's super hard wearing, and it looks a bit, you know, rough and tumble. Yeah. So that's project number one on the FJ. Project number two is a hairy Larry exhaust, uh, as donated by a veterinary surgeon that looks after the boys. She and her wife are uh, ardent FJ fans and they both have one and the one she just bought had this apparently obnoxiously loud exhaust on it. So it would be rude not to fit it really wouldn't it because we like noisy and we like obnoxious. It's not as bad as the Ducati. And the good thing is I had a quick shifty under the FJ and it looks like it all kind of should fit so that's always a result. So, first off is stripping off all these stickers, which thankfully are Arizona made and Arizona resistant. Um, so they're not eaten into the paintwork like this stuff. I mean, just, yeah, look at it. Oh, awful. Yeah, hideous. Yeah, anyway, that's just a razor blade or a, yeah, Stanley blade, whatever. Um, and just peeling it off and I don't care too much because obviously the rhino paint has a texture and it doesn't really matter. I probably won't even, well, I'll get some of the gunk off. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably take something to strip that off, but I'm really not that bothered. This car is never going to be for sale, not in my lifetime, and therefore it's not my problem, so I don't care, as long as it looks good. Yes, more paint. No, the yellow's not for the FJ. That's for that. Yes, the bumper car. How's that for a quick mask up? Yeah, well, I'm doing the roof, and that's enough, because this stuff doesn't overspray very much, because it's kind of thick and heavy. So, um, I think that'll do the job. Yeah, and we're going to paint all that anyway. Successfully masked that off. A lot better. It's like a vinyl roof out of the 1970s. I need some furry seats. Oh, I've got some. Yes, thanks to the boys. Not bad. Well, there's a better perspective, and um, yeah, quite pleased with that. A few little marks on the roof there, but 
Using some of this marvellous stuff to get the remnants of the stickers off the doors works pretty well, as you can see. Apart from the aforementioned stuff that's baked in. Well, better than it was, but um, some runs, as you can see. Doesn't like doing vertical. This paint, bit of a bummer. Hope it's sand down. Well, this is proving to be a Herculean task, for sure. Got one can left and uh, two doors in the back panel to do, so I think I need another can. So that'll be seven cans at 11 bucks each, that's 77 bucks. Like I said, entire paint job for under 100 bucks. Not bad, eh? So, overall, it don't look bad, but when you get up close, there's some nasty drips on there, and we're going to see if we can't sand them down a bit. I know why it happened, because I wasn't spraying like I normally do. I've been spraying this, and if you are not watching this series, I uh, beg you to do so. Uh, it's fun. Anyway, long and the short of it is that uh, I was using some Ace hardware enamel um, on the bumper car, and uh, just holding it down and spraying it all over so as not to get lines. However, as I think I said, this stuff is actually pretty goopy as it goes on and by holding it down permanently rather than letting off at the end of the spray stroke you get like a blob because you're hitting it twice all at once so yeah that's where the runs came in well it was obviously a bit tricky to sand down because it's supposed to be scratch resistant right yeah so i've only done the uh, the worst bits I'll give them a hit when I open up the can to do the other side. Which is prepped and ready to go, except I need to take that off. Right, let's do this side. You'll notice there is no masking going on. And that's because all we need to mask is this. With that. How cool is that? That and a piece of fairly flexible cardboard. Like I said, it's kind of gloopy and the overspray is not bad. A bit like that Plasti Dip stuff. So, wish me luck. As you can see on this side, a lot less runs by employing my usual method. Um, yeah, missed that masking, didn't I? Anyway, um, yeah, a lot better this side. And did it oh. Little run there. Hmm. Anyway, and finished off this rear three quarters and uh, kind of repaired those big drips on this side to some degree. Like I said, I don't really care what it looks like. That's not so good there, is it? I miss that bit. Anyway. Yeah, just the back to go. Don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to get that off. Gugon ain't going to fix that. I know, you think I'm crazy, you think it's worth fortune, and I've just trashed it by putting a dodgy paint job on it, but have you seen the inside? Yes, my furry seats, thanks to my furry friends. Uh, yeah, and claws and things. So... <laughs> it's never going to sell. And furthermore, I don't want to sell it. So it's just whether I'm happy with what it looks like. And I am. So there. Anyway, you're not interested in that. You're interested in the technique, if at all. <laughs> and um, yes, in addition to employing my normal technique of stop-start, at the end of each spray, I, uh, I held the can a little bit further away because it's gloopy stuff. So don't be afraid to mist it on from somewhat of a distance compared to the normal kind of four to six inches. I was kind of six to 12. And there's the final panel done, the back, which actually, I got better at it as I went along. So that's pretty damn good. Lovely. Would have been rude not to do the wheel cover at the same time. Job done. Next up, exhaust system. Now we've got the gasket in, we are ready to go. So let's save that for the next episode, right? Thanks again, as usual, for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so somewhere down here. Uh, of course, give the video the thumbs up if you thought it was remotely 
interesting, useful, or entertaining even. Do tune in next time to see, uh, see how we fit this exhaust up. That'll be interesting. And of course, encourage others to watch my lunacy.